What up, folks? How we doing? So I um, woke up today, and it's usually like perks of getting older, you're a little wiser, that type of thing. Um, <clears throat> and then I got this thing. What is that? It's like, can you still get acne uh, when you're this old? Anyway, thought that was past that. Guess not. So the rest of this video, you're going to be looking at that the whole time, I'm sure. All right, so questions from the community. I'm liking these, so be sure and drop them below. Oh, also real quick, if you're not a member... Click the link and get a uh, $100 discount. The sale ends tonight, which is Wednesday if you're watching this. But yeah, check that out real quick if you're not a member. All right, question from the community. Kelly, great question, Kelly. Any idea where you can find kid-friendly workouts, gyms, etc.? It seems they all start at 13. My granddaughter has gained 30 pounds uh, this past year, which I don't get because she isn't a big junk food eater and plays softball five days a week. But she's getting fat. Okay, so we got a young kid who's active, has gained 30 pounds this past year. Okay, let's set aside the hormone issue, um, which young girls can go through, which is pretty much beyond my skill set. Let's talk fitness and nutrition, which is something I feel more confident in. Now, get, let's just take a step back and look at our culture uh, from a distance. You know, one, one of the things that's interesting to me and slash really sad is again, I'm from a rural town in North Florida, and my mom's in education. And I go back there, and I look at the kids now, and a lot of them are obese, and a lot of low-income families that are obese. And normally, you know, when I was growing up, if you were low-income, you didn't eat as much, and you were typically really thin. And now, even low-income kids um, are overweight. And so we've got to start asking ourselves, like, even if we're not eating a ton, what are we really putting in our kids' bodies? Um, this is where, to me, the strongest argument for a whole food diet. I know you said she's not a junk eater, but we put sugar and uh, pretty much everything now. So if you're eating real whole food, which is what we advocate here, you're going to naturally consume less calories and less sugar just by default. So you can start with the Whole30 program with your granddaughter. That'd be a great place to start. We have a meal plan if you're a member. Just hit the Eat tab. And it's a, a whole food plan there as well. But Whole30's got a great program for you to start with her. And then as far as the workouts go, I'm a big fan of teaching kids how to support their own body weight. So I would have her do our Team I-20 workouts, beginner or advanced, either one, depending on how her level of athleticism at that age. But have her do those. And again, get in your step count. It sounds like she's pretty active. She's playing softball. Again, I don't know as much about her practice schedule, some some trainers or softball coaches are great at keeping them active. I've seen some softball coaches really sit on their ass and just sit in left field the whole day and don't do a lot of exercise. So just because you're playing softball doesn't mean you're moving a lot. All right. And the idea that even in third, maybe you can run a few gasters at practice, the majority of people now are on their phones, including kids, way too long. They need to be, you need to wear those kids out. So have them do the Team 20 workouts, eat a whole food diet, keep them active throughout the day. That's a great place to start, and blessings and love to uh, you, for Kelly, for writing that in, and I know you're concerned about your granddaughter. All right. Oh, one more quick thing on that real quick. Again, as we take a step back, and again, I don't want to scare you, Kelly, with your granddaughter here with gaining 30 pounds, but diabetes is a huge problem uh, in our country, and we cannot talk about balancing the budget and all these things without addressing obesity and diabetes. So in 2018, 34.2 million Americans, or roughly 10% of the population, had diabetes. What's even more scarier is 88 million Americans are estimated age 18 and older have pre-diabetes. So 88, in addition to the 34, 88 million don't even know they are going to be diabetic and they will be shortly. So that is a huge concern. That adds up to almost roughly a little less than a third of the population here. All right, so that's just some uh, stuff to scare your ass straight and get you on a whole food diet. Last question here from Mike. Todd, how much weight training do you do, um, or is it most of your time body weight, yoga, kettlebell, etc.? A discussion came up that one argument was three weight workouts per week was good enough, but it seemed like I seem to think TMAC 20 daily workouts with walking actually produces greater results. Nutrition is key. That being aside, what are your thoughts? All right, great question. And there's a million ways you can go with this from your age to your activity level, what you're able to do. Ultimately, like I say all the time, and it's not a sexy answer, if it comes to what you consistently do, will get you the best results, right? So 
Weight training is great. There's a lot of benefits to weight training if you do it consistently. Mike, what you're finding out is that you're able to do the TMAC 20 program consistently, and that's why you're getting great results. So again, the 20-minute workouts, mixing in with the 320 concept of getting in walks throughout the day with a whole food diet, you'll get great results with our program. Now, that was a reason why we also added the kettlebell program as kind of a supplement to that. So what I would advise is twice a week, so you've got your calendar on your TMAC membership, and you notice that Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we have hit hit workouts, right? Team at 20 hit workouts. I would take two of those, say Monday and Friday, bookends of the week, and do the Team Act Strong kettlebell workouts for optimal results. Because weight training will help you build more muscle, which will actually help you actually burn fat throughout the day. So that would be for optimal results. If you have kettlebell, do the Team Act Strong kettlebell workouts Monday and Friday, and then just keep doing your Team Act 20 workouts in between. But ultimately, again, it comes to what you consistently do to get the most results. Again, if you don't have a membership, click the link, get it. If you have any questions, shoot them below. I'm enjoying these guys. Have an amazing week.